Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Robbie Robertson, along with Oklahoma State head coach Eddie Sutton. Dean Blevins taking a little time off. And the last time we were with you, the Cowboys were 8-0 and had won the National Invitation Preseason Championship. And now, Coach, 13-0, uh, and ranked third in the nation. You must feel pretty good about that. Well, the uh, year 1991 ended on a happy note, and we got off to a good start in 92. Uh, the five games we won, uh, the thing that has carried us, and it has for most of the season, Robbie, has been our defense. We're holding our opponents to less than 60 points a game. They're shooting a poor 39% from the field, and we're forcing them into about 18 turnovers, and we're getting good balanced scoring. We have four starters averaging double figures, and if you, if you take uh, Bryant Reeves and Randy Davis, who are basically playing one position, uh, that would be all five starters in double figures because those two guys are getting better and together averaging 17.2 points per game. That's pretty good. Yes, it is. Cowboys are uh, definitely on a roll, and when we come back, we'll take a look at Wichita State, Tulsa, and the start of the Big 8 conference season for the Cowboys, a look at the Kansas State game. Stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show continues right after this. The ninth game of the season saw the Cowboys at home against Wichita State. This is part of the uh, Oklahoma State pay-per-view package. And, uh, Coach, it was nice to get back in gallagher Ivor Arena and let the, the fans take a look at the ball club as you play host to Wichita State. It's always nice to be in gallagher Ivor Arena. That's a very <laughs> friendly place, and uh, our players love to play there. And our crowd certainly plays the part of the sixth man. Very, very uh, instrumental in our being able to reel off a lot of victories in a row. Wichita State, uh, you lost at Wichita State last year, but uh, you've got a little different ball club this year. They got a little different ball club this year. Well, there you see uh, Darren Alexander hitting a, a three-pointer. Uh, they've got a young basketball team, and our defense just dismantled them. Great penetrating drive by Sean, a nice dish off to Byron Houston. That's what we use the term, penetrate and pitch. Defense gets us the ball, another lead pass from Sean to, to Corey Williams. Corey and... Uh, Darwin, Byron, and Davis all hitting double figures in this ball game. Byron led us with 25 points. Good job on the boards there. Tough player. Well, he is a tough player. And, of course, uh, uh, he had a foot injury and was out for a couple of weeks during the holidays. We allowed the team to go home for four days, but he was not able to practice. But it, uh, he is rounding himself back into condition. And the other night against Kansas State, he didn't get to play very much because he got in foul trouble. Randy Davis has really contributed off the bench. Well, he and Bryant Reeves both have contributed. They've uh, made remarkable progress since we started uh, October 15th, and, and that's one of the keys uh, on how much better we can get because that is an area that we need continued improvement. And you see again our defense. Cornell Hatcher, great pass to Corey Williams. And, Ooh, a good uh, what, a, what a great <laughs> athletic move. One of the fastest players in the country, Corey Williams, and... Oklahoma State able to win the game handily. Last basket there by Sean Pell on a nice pass by Bryant Reeves. Sean Pell hasn't gotten to play that much, but will play a lot in the future. Okay, Oklahoma State uh, uh, wins the ball game. We, we might have explained a little bit, uh, uh, Coach, uh, the students are still out uh, as far as Christmas break is concerned. What, what have you and the players been doing? You've been taking a lot of time off? Can't maybe? you tell by my yeah, voice? I was going to ask you about no, that. I called Mr. <laughs> Iba one day and I was much hoarser than I am today, and he said, what's wrong with you, boy? And I said, Mr. Ive, I've got the same problem that you had when we used to have the, those two- and three-day practice sessions. I've just been uh, coaching too much, and he laughed about that. But we did have a, a good holiday. All of the players got to go home for four days. It probably hurt us a little bit when we returned because we didn't have quite the old timing you would have had you practiced. But I've always felt that Basketball is such a long season that uh, if you allow the young men to go home and be with their families, they're probably a little bit better at the end of the year. And they all had a good time. Santa Claus was good to them. They returned in pretty good condition. And when they came back, we started uh, working two times a day. Uh, there were three or four days that we went three times a day, but uh, they handled it quite well. They realized that we've got a chance to uh, be an extra special team. Uh, we were undefeated at this point number three in the country, and uh, the rankings are really for the fans at this point. We want to be that high at the end of the year, and then we will have, we'll know that we had a great season. But uh, they fully realize that if we continue to work like we have, 
we got a chance to be uh, one of the best teams this, this school's ever had. Uh, after uh, a victory over Houston Baptist, the Cowboys had to go on the road uh, to play the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. That ball game played at the uh, Tulsa Convention Center, Coach. And we met a very inspired ball club uh, in uh, the University of Tulsa. Uh, they played probably the best game they played all season long, and we had a very difficult time with them. We're in the dark jerseys, Cornell Hatcher off to Randy Davis, and Randy Davis in the first half against Tulsa was sensational. He had 16 points and just played probably the best 20 minutes of basketball he's played since coming to OSU. Nice pass by Darwin Alexander off the fast break, and Davis laid it home. Watch the effort here by Byron Houston. No, no quitting this guy, I guarantee you. Well, there's an indication that he was a little rusty. Uh, he normally was going to get that first put back, but he had not practiced, but uh, I guess a couple of days before the Tulsa game, and as I mentioned earlier, he had really been on the sidelines for a couple of weeks. Great rebound by uh, Randy Davis. Watch this. Mm. Those we, high percentage shots, those are nice. We okay. use a term, go to the board early, don't go late. Uh, assume every shot's going to be missed, and that's what he does. He sees uh, a perimeter shot go up, he crashes the glass, and uh, that's a spectacular play. Second half now, uh, Oklahoma State and Tulsa. Nice shot by Corey Williams from the top of the circle. There was a chance there in the second half where we thought we had the game broken. Uh, we had a 13-point lead, but the three-point shot came back to haunt us a little bit, and Malum hit uh, Told of 10 points on three possessions, and we had to fight for a life. This is going to be the play of the, of the week right there. Great, great tip effort. in uh, on a missed shot by uh, Sean. Really showed what uh, kind of a player Byron is. And this stuff by Byron puts the Cowboys up by three, and you trailed with five minutes to go, and, and Byron uh, really dominated the game in the last five minutes of the ball game, and Oklahoma State uh, you ended up beating Tulsa. That, uh, how did you feel about that game? Did, uh, did you feel like that we were a little bit rusty there and that uh, obviously had some things to improve upon? Well, we probably didn't play as well as we had in some games, but you have to give the University of Tulsa a lot of credit. Uh, they were inspired, well prepared, and certainly came to play. A very intense battle, and uh, not only a part of the players, but the fans were very intense. Mm -hmm. It was played on New Year's Eve, and uh, the arena was about half and half as far as support was concerned. But we were happy to get out of there with a victory. And uh, you said Byron led us there at the end, but we had a lot of other guys that displayed a lot of courage. I thought our seniors all came to the front. Absolutely. And then uh, the new year for Oklahoma State started with a win over Midwestern State. And then it's on to Big 8 conference play. Cowboys back home. Uh, big Monday on ESPN. Play host to Kansas State. One of the most incredible games I've ever seen, Coach. Well, it was an incredible game, and here we take a look at uh, good defense leading to the first basket. Uh, Sean ran through the pass and laid it up. K-State is a much better bas basketball team than uh, what uh, was displayed on their part in this particular game, but I would not want to take anything away from our ball club. Uh, probably one of the best defensive efforts that uh, we've seen in Gallagher Ivory Arena in a long while. Heller Ball Club to 29% shooting, forced 20 turnovers. Just 11 And just really got them rattled, game. and they only had 11 points in intermission. And uh, the last time that occurred was way back when I was playing, and we played the Billikens of St. Louis and held them to 11 points in one half. Well, I'm not sure the Cowboys want Duke just yet, but uh, at any rate, the fans are really in the ball game too. Nice effort by uh, Bryant Reeves. We felt like that he was more active in this ball game than anyone he had played in. This is just before intermission and very good uh, play on the part of uh, Darwin drove the what we call penetrate a window, kicked the ball at Sean. He did the same and Corey was able to convert the three point play and we went to halftime up 32 to 11. We, we beat Jam and yeah. that's what that By was. Byron beat Jam in there early in the second half as the Cowboys What's this play? Continue. This is a great play for a seven footer. Stole the ball. Went right back in, used his body for, to protect the basketball, and laid it up. Lots of candidates for play of the week this week. <laughs> well, that could have been the, the play of the week for sure. Nice drive by Sean down the baseline. Sean had a big game, 16 points, I believe. One of the ball. best that he's had since uh, he came to OSU. Here we're off and running again. Our defense gets us a basketball. Nice lead pass. Look at Darren was going over there and congratulating <laughs> right. some of the fans for being so active and helping him out. <laughs> Great togetherness on this yeah. ball club. That's one thing that the seniors have helped 
give us along with my great coaching staff and that's one thing that I think will allow us to continue to be successful. Three point shot by Sean, he led our ball club in scoring with 16. We had Randy Davis with 13 and Darren with 10. But Byron very, had foul trouble here and spent yeah. a lot of time on the bench, played 20 minutes in the game. Nice shot there by Collins. Look at that, look at those students. Even though school wasn't in session, <laughs> right. they came back to watch this ball you, game. You could never tell that school, school was not in session there. Big 8 basketball is something special. I think all of our fans realize that, and they were there to really help. I was concerned that we might not have a sellout, but it was sold out. Okay, Cowboys turning it up a notch as Big 8 conference play is underway. We'll talk, about, uh, talk more about that a little later on the show. We'll come back with uh, Play of the Week, Coach's Corner, lots more on the Eddie Sutton Show. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a minute. If you ever needed a bucket late in a ball game, here's a good way to get it. Our play of the week comes from the Tulsa game, Coach. He just wouldn't be denied. Byron Again, Houston. you've got to assume every shot's going to be missed. And uh, Tulsa didn't block out very well, but he just used a lot of determination. Watch this. He gets bumped. He actually gets fouled, yeah. almost gets his legs knocked out from under him. He goes up one-handed and tipped it in, and, and that was a very, very big play, and that really sparked us to uh, win the game over Tulsa. A lot of intensity now that the Big 8 conference season uh, gets started? There's intensity any time the Big 8 gets started, and it's the same way in all conferences. I think that you see the, the fans become more intent, but you certainly see the players, and it was very evident in our first outing with Kansas State. It'll be the same way this week as the other Big 8 schools get uh, their season started. All right, the Eddie Sutton Show will continue in just a moment after this message from Southwest Airlines. Oklahoma State opened Big A conference play with a remarkable defensive performance against uh, Kansas State. And Coach, I just wonder what other opponents think about when they see your ball club playing defense. Well, I think anybody that saw that ball game has to be impressed with our team. Now, we don't always play as well as we <laughs> did against Kansas State. Beating them 72-34, to 34, that was a remarkable feat. Uh, there had to be a lot of things go your way. But what we try to do defensively is really put a lot of pressure on the man that has the basketball overplay the passing lanes. If you're covering a man one pass away, then you're going to overplay. Uh, if you're more than one pass away, you're going to sink to the lane area. Try to keep the ball out of the pivot area and hope that you don't give up more than one shot on each possession, one shot or less. Uh, I thought uh, we set the stage early in this ball game, and we're going to take a look at this right now. This was the first play, the first time Kansas State had possession, and you'll see good pressure by Bryant Reeves on the ball, and watch, here comes Good pressure there, and here comes Sean. We use the term running through the pass. Let's go back and take another look at that. And you'll see everybody who is one pass away is going to be overplaying. Bryant Reeves is containing the man with the ball, harassing him. We're going to try to disrupt their offense. We're going to not make it easy for them to run their offense. And when your defense is active like this, good things are going to happen to you. Now watch. Good containment. He goes to his left. Now, Picks up his dribble. Bryant's all over him. Here comes Coy up the floor. Overplay. Here comes Sean. Runs through the pass. Mm. Easy two points at the other end. Make when our look, defense is playing well, we're pretty good. Make it, make it look so simple. Everybody's well, covered all the time. It was simple uh, sometimes. <laughs> you can't against some ball clubs, and if you're just a little bit flat at the defensive end, then uh, it really shows up, and you don't look nearly as sharp. But we were really... Uh, on target the other night against Kansas State. All right, Oklahoma State 1-0 and in, in Big 8 Conference play. When we come back, we'll take a look at the standings and show you the schedule, what's ahead for Oklahoma State. Stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show continues right after this. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Uh, Coach, you've been, uh, you know, school is still out as far as Christmas vacation is concerned. How difficult is it to handle a team when you're not in the dorm? Does that create problems? Well, it does create problems because uh, even though we have a lot more practice time and we tell our players uh, now is a, a time that you can really focus in, you can concentrate strictly on basketball because you don't have the responsibility of your classes and uh, really not much to do socially in <laughs> Stillwater with all your uh, classmates gone. Uh, but it is a problem because they can't live in the dorm, so their everyday life is disrupted. Uh, we have them in the Holiday Inn here in, in Stillwater and uh, they certainly uh, have extended great hospitality to us, but still it's not quite the same. And I think that can be said for a lot of basketball teams across the country. 
And that's one of the reasons why during the holiday period you'll see some upsets because of this disruptive uh, uh, way that players have to uh, take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. They have to eat out, whereas uh, it's not quite the same even though uh, they're living in the dorm and sometimes they complain about dorm food. At least their, their classmates are there. And I think that's one of the reasons that our players are looking forward to all the students returning. Uh, some of them I saw over on campus today as I drove over here. And by this weekend, I think most of the students will be back because second semester will begin next Monday. So our players are excited about being able to move back in the dorm, back into East Bennett on Saturday afternoon. The Big 8 Conference uh, race is underway. <laughs> Oklahoma State, K-State is the only game that has been played thus far, but uh, you might take a look at the overall uh, records of the teams in the Big 8. Remarkable records. Uh, throwing that one game out uh, in non-conference play, the Big 8 has won 80 games and lost only 12 which is the best showing of any conference in the country. And uh, when you talk about the uh, quality of play, you look at the top half of the league, but you also look at the bottom half of the league. And guys, this is going to be a remarkable league race uh, this season. I think the fans are going to be in for a great show. Every time uh, two teams uh, throw it up, it's going to be a great basketball game. And three of the teams in the Big 8 Conference are nationally ranked, but you mentioned upsets. Uh, Missouri was upset earlier in the week, so maybe that was a contributing factor. What, what have you learned about the ball club from uh, the, the first eight games of the season, and then we went away for a couple of weeks, and now we've played 13 games. So what have you learned in those five games about your ball club? I think one area that we've improved in uh, during that period of time has been rebounding because uh, the last time we had this show, we were trailing in total rebounds, yet we were still 8-0. and zero. Uh, That's been turned around. In the five games that we've won since that time, we've out-rebounded our opponents. And again, a lot of that credit has to go to our two big guys, Reeves and Davis, although they've been getting a lot of help from their teammates, and we've worked on our rebounding, so we hope that continues. Let's take a look at the... Uh the uh, schedule for what's coming up here in this coming week uh, for Oklahoma State, just a couple of conference We games. only have two conference games this week. Nebraska opens the season at Boulder against the Buffaloes, and uh, you have the University of, uh, of Oklahoma traveling up to Iowa State. A lot of tough non-conference games there. And then Monday night, a big key game in conference play. The University of Kansas goes to Missouri, and those two teams are strong contenders. And, of course, we uh, play Marquette. Uh, Tuesday night and Saturday night we host University of uh, Missouri at Kansas City. How do you feel about playing non-conference games when the in the well not in the middle of but around a Big Eight race? Well, I think that uh, you have to do that today because uh, the way TV dictates you moving to games, uh, it's better to have two games every week and get on a schedule. So I think that's what you're seeing. We're playing two non-conference games in between our opening game with K-State and Iowa State, two quality opponents, and it's better to be playing someone than it is just to have an open date. I don't think you can get quite as intent, maybe. I think that fans don't, and sometimes the players don't. But uh, that's, that's up to the coaches to make sure we don't get upset against the Warriors of Marquette or the Kangaroos of uh, Missouri, Kansas City. All right, Coach, what about, uh, real quickly now, um, you got a new addition to the ball club. A very welcome addition. Uh, people have been asking about this all season long, and until he got here, I couldn't make any comments. But Randy Rutherford is now on campus. He's practiced with us for a couple of days. He'll be in class starting Monday. Uh, he'll have three years of eligibility left. We're not going to play him this semester, even though we could. He'll be practicing every day, but he'll have three years. And uh, what a wonderful young man and an outstanding basketball player. We're glad he's here where he belongs. Okay. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, thanks for being with us. We will be here every week until the end of the basketball season for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Thanks for joining us. For Coach Eddie Sutton at Oklahoma State University, I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody.